In this video, I'm going to show you how to start building an NBA stat model. My name is MG, MG Covers. Greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, greatly appreciate you guys follow me on Instagram. I give out a ton of content there. Screen name for that is MG Covers, Covers spell with a Z. There'll be a link in the description of this video to follow me there. Super excited about this. Haven't done a video talking about building models in a while. And considering NBA season has started, most teams have played about five games. I think this is a really good educational video. So let's dive right into it. If you're looking at this screen, we're basically at NBA.com. And I think what I'm going to do with this particular video, I'm going to make this a two-part series. We're going to talk about some concepts, some things to look for when you're building a model how you would actually start building a model. And this is applicable to not only NBA, you could apply this to NHL, college football, et cetera. All right, so the first step, we wanna look at some stats. So just so everybody's on the same page, I'm at nba.com and NBA has a very robust um, stat page. Click on stats home and you go over here to teams and then click on traditional stats. And it will pull you up to, to this screen. now. To sort of jump ahead here, if you look, it says all season segments. Once you get your model rolling, what's really cool about NBA.com, all sports should do this, really. You can, you can use, if you're building a model using, using last five games, you can use last seven, you can use last 10. So it's really, really good for um, if you have a model and you're using NBA.com stats where you can use last five, 10, or eight. I wish all other sports professional websites did this but they don't but anyway all right so let's do um off season so we're basically looking at year-to-date stats all right so here's step one when i'm looking at starting building a model now this is one way there's several ways you can do it but again they only they've only teams have only played five games right so what we're going to do is see where it says wins we're going to click on wins and what that does is that pulls up the top ten top teams that have won the most games. Cleveland's five and zero, Boston's four and one, Golden State four and one, Oklahoma City four and zero, Chicago three and two, so on and so on. The reason that's important is now teams are in order of the games that they won. So if you come in here to the bottom, you have Utah Jazz is 0 and 4, Toronto's 1 and 4, San Antonio 1 and 3, Philadelphia 1 and 3, Milwaukee 1 and 3. Now, what you can do is what we're looking for is a stat or stats that correlate to winning. So we can come over here. We have, and the cool thing about NBA, and this is also true, I would say, for college basketball and also hockey, there's just not that many stats for this particular sport. So by process of elimination, you can, I wouldn't say it's easier to build a model, but there's there's not a lot to pick from. Meaning NBA, you have points for, points against, you have field goals, field goal percentage, uh, three-point percentage, you have turnovers and rebounds. That's pretty much it. So you really don't have that much to decipher. And so of those stats I listed, there'll only be a couple of those that actually correlate to winning. So I'll go ahead and talk about one that's obvious, and this has gotten a lot of attention here in the early part of NBA season, is three-point percentage. Now, if you look over here, Cleveland is 5-0, and all right? And their three-point percentage is 41. Now, if you click on three-point percentage, what it will do is it will put in order the top teams in field goal percentage. And then look over here to the left. Cleveland is the number one team for three-point percentage at 41%. Boston is second at four, four, at um 40%. So boom, we've already seen just in those two examples that correlates to winning, albeit with a small sample size. And then we round out the top five, New York Knicks, two and two, Minnesota, two and two, Charlotte, two and two, and then Golden State there at four and one. Now, another thing to do is I generally, when I'm doing this, I like to look at the top five and then the bottom five so that I can see if the top five have a, that stat has a correlation to winning, then if it's a good stat, the bottom five should show a correlation to losing. So here we have Philadelphia as one in three, shooting 32% from the threes. Wait, let me make sure that's the right one. I think it's. 
Okay, it's this one here. My bad. It's the one in black. Okay, Philadelphia, 27%. They're one in three. Utah Jazz is shooting 28%. They are 0 and 4. Now, this is really interesting. Look at U Oklahoma City is only shooting 31% from the three point line, yet they're 4 and 0, but they're the third worst three point percentage team in the NBA. Hold that thought and remember that. We're going to come back to that here real quickly. And then you have Toronto 1 and 4. And you have Portland two and three. So with the exception of Oklahoma City, all five of the bottom teams have a losing record. Whereas if you go up here to the top, uh, Cleveland's five and zero, oh, Boston's four and one. You have the Knicks, Minnesota, Charlotte are all two and two. Golden State four and one, and then we'll add in Chicago there at seven three and two. So there is a correlation to winning based on three point percentage. Now. When I'm building models, if I notice something like that that stands out, like you come back down here to Oklahoma City, like how can they be 39% field goal percentage? I'm sorry, 31%, the third worst in the NBA, yet they're 4 0. So now let's I click on uh, Oklahoma City here, and now it pulls up their year to date. I tell you what, let's go back here. Let's go back. Let's pull them up here. All right, so Oklahoma City. Now, what you can do is you can start to look for other stats as well. So the first thing we'll do is let's look at points scored. All right, so you have Cleveland at 5-0. and They're averaging 125 points. Boston, 125 points. And some of that is correlated to it may even be field goal percentage or that three-point percentage. Look at Golden State, 44%. And then there is Oklahoma City. My bad, 44% field goal percentage. So interesting is that their field goal percentage is, let's see where that ranks. How interesting is this? You got to go all the way down to 17th. So Oklahoma City is the third worst team for field goal percentage, right? And they're also the 17th worst or best, I guess you could say, for field goal percentage, right? So we still need to figure out what stat that's causing that because this could help us tweak our model. Now watch this. This is really cool. I've already sort of done the research on this. Now, this is an often a neglected stat in football, pretty much all sports, defense. It's not sexy. People like to talk about offense. But when you're building models, defense has a huge role sometimes in correlating to winning. We saw that in the Super Bowl. I've mentioned this in previous videos with Kansas City and San Francisco. There was a lot of hype surrounding San Francisco, how good their offense was. But in reality, Kansas City won that Super Bowl because of their defense. Uh, San Francisco only scored one touchdown. Uh, Kansas City did as well, but that defense played a significant role in Kansas City winning that Super Bowl. So let's look at defense. Now for defense, what you want to look at is opponent. So you click on opponent, and now this pulls up. Same thing. We can click on wins, do the same thing. Now what I want to do is go over here and look at opponent points. <laughs> look who's the number one team in points allowed in the NBA year to date. Oklahoma City, 94.8. And what's fascinating, let's scroll down and look at the next team. We have Golden State is 4-1, and one, only allowing 99 points. Look at Houston's 2-2, two and two, they're allowing 107. Check out Cleveland there, only allowing 107 points at 5-0. and oh. LA Clippers allowing 107 points as well. They're 2-2. Two and two. And let's go ahead and add Orlando in there at 3-2. and two. So the top six teams and points allowed in the NBA all have a 50% or greater win percentage year to date. And let's go all the way to the bottom. And obviously, there'll be a correlation to this, right? Uh, Washington's two and two, Toronto's one and four, Atlanta two and three, Memphis two and three, Indiana two and three, and Charlotte two and three as well. Now, the second thing you can do so now we've 
we've figured out why Oklahoma City is 4-0. and has nothing to do with their field goal percentage, nothing to do with their three-point percentage, but more to do with defense. So now we fi- found another stat that's probably neglected, especially when building models, is defense. And what you would want to do is there's several ways you could actually factor this or put this in a model. You could just use, excuse me, opponent points like it's shown here or figure out what other stat is causing their opponents to score less points. And watch this. Let's go opponent three-point percentage. (laughs) Look at Oklahoma City Thunder. So Oklahoma City Thunder has the best Three point percentage defense. So they're really good on the perimeter. How fascinating is that? So in the in the previous example when we talked about offense, I showed you three point percentage correlated to winning. So what happens when a good three point percentage team plays a good defensive three point percentage defense? Very difficult to win. And that's part of the reason why opponents are scoring less against Oklahoma City. And again, we'll do the same thing. Look at the top three-point percentage defensive teams, Oklahoma City 4-0, Golden State 4-1, Chicago Bulls 3-2, Boston Celtics 4-1, and and then you have Indiana there with a losing record at 2-3. So just at a quick glance, one simple way you could put together a model was would be to take, you could use opponent points, and you could use offensive three-point percentage, or you could use three-point percentage offense and then average that with the team that they're playing's, playing their field goal percentage defense. So how cool is that? Now, so what I might do in part two of this video is actually show you how to load this in Google Sheets. So to summarize this, if you found this video interesting, I actually teach stat model building. I have a new program. It's going to launch January the 3rd. If you go to my website and go over to mgcovers.com, go over to the far right, there's something that says stat model. Click on that and you can sign up and get on the email list. So you'll get email notifications. I'm going to send out some proprietary content. So if you're on that list, you'll get content very similar to this, maybe a couple of times a month until we actually launch the new stat model building program. And super excited about that. So hopefully you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, share it, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.